Welcome back to eMedia Coach. I'm going to show you how to easily move any WordPress website from your local computer or a local host to a web host, in other words, a live website, very, very easily in just four steps. Previously, I showed you how to create an entire WordPress website on your local host. So you may have just come from that, built your entire WordPress website, and it's time now to transfer it over to your live public facing URL. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. So we're going to do this in four easy steps. The first step to moving your website from your local host to your web host is to get online and that is to acquire a web host. So we're going to do that first. Then we're going to install WordPress on our web host, the new web host that we acquire. The third step is we're going to export the website from our local host and last and most importantly import the website into our web host and I'm going to show you these steps side by side so you can see exactly what's happening so it's going to be very simple the end effect is it's going to be an exact clone of our website that we have right now so let's start with step one, getting your web host. If you look in the description below, click on the link under this video and it will take you to this page here, hostgator.com and it will take you to the discount version of this website. I'll get into that in a sec, but Hostgator is one of the world's most well-known web hosts and I've been using them since around 2004, so a long, long time. And I host all of my personal websites, business websites and e-com sites uh, with them. So they offer 24 by seven support. They've got a live chat and you can see some more information on them if you would like to. But what you need to do is go to the web hosting button. And what we need is a basic shared web hosting package. The hatchling plan allows a single website, whereas the baby allows a number of different websites. If you are going to be transferring a number of websites, I would recommend this one. But for most of you, a single domain is all you'll need to host. So let's click on the button there. If you have already registered your domain elsewhere, such as um, your website.com, your business name.com, whatever that is, enter that in there and you'll have to connect your domain to your HostGator hosting later on. But for most of you, you'll probably need to enter or register a new domain. And I've got a domain that I'm going to move my e-commerce store to called thestoredemo.com. That's already taken because I've already purchased that through HostGator. So for the purposes of this, let me just do that. You should be able to see something like that when a domain you want is available. Um, scroll down, you can deselect the add privacy protection from your domain. I often don't do that, it just depends. That's what a protected domain privacy looks like when someone looks for the owner of the domain and that's what a public one looks like. It's completely up to you. I often just keep it as public, there's no issue with that. Now, the longer you subscribe for hosting upfront, the cheaper it gets per month, as with most things. I tend to stick with a 12 or 24 month billing cycle because it's quite cheap. It's about $5, um, four if it's for two years. But I'm going to show you how to get a better discount in a second. If you scroll down and deselect any of these additional services, you don't need any of them. You don't need that one there, I don't use them. You don't need professional email add-on. You can have your name at yourbusinessdomain.com as an email address. That's part of your hosting package. You don't need this Gmail add-on at all. You don't need the backup option. I'll show you how to backup your website in another video for free. So you don't need any of these add-ons. Now in this coupon box, enter the coupon discounted, D-I-S-C-O-U-N, TED discounted and click validate. Once you click validate, you should be able to scroll up and see there are a range of discount options to choose from and it'll give you an even bigger discount than what you had previously. So take advantage of that. Another option if you don't want to subscribe for about a year or two up front, which I actually do recommend because it's so cheap, but if you want, there's also another coupon, one dirty cent. By using that, you get the first month for free but every other month will be a bit more expensive so I don't recommend that but do it if you have to 
So I'm going to stick to this. I'm going to select a two year billing cycle, or actually a one year billing cycle for this. It should be okay, renew every year. Enter a username for your account. Enter a security pin. Then enter your billing information. And I'm going to blur my screen as I do this. And then your payment info, such as your credit card or PayPal. When you've done all that, just scroll down, double check your billing amount, and click the Accept Terms and Conditions checkbox and check out, and that will be step one finished. After you do that, you'll have got your very own web host and we can install WordPress on that. After that, it'll be live. We can export our local site and we can import our brand new site to our brand new domain. So hit check out when you've done that and I'll show you the next step. Next, you'll receive an email from HostGator confirming your purchase and your web host setup. All you need to do is log into this thing here called your control panel, enter your username and password at the login screen, Enter the username and password. You can just copy and paste and make sure there's no spaces at the end, otherwise it won't work. And log in. Absolutely perfect. So now we're going to go to the next step, which is installing WordPress. What you need to do is scroll down and look for the quick install button. Alternatively, you can also go to build a new WordPress website. Anything you see a WordPress logo next to, it should end up on the same page. So if I go to quick install, and then I want to go to WordPress, here we can install WordPress for free. It doesn't cost a cent to install this platform. Your domain should automatically be populated in here if you've got a single domain. If you've got multiple, you'll just have to select the domain you want to install it on from the drop-down. Leave this directory empty. You want to install WordPress in the core domain that you can see here, not in a directory. So leave that empty. You don't need any of these upsells. We're going to be doing um, all of this ourselves. We're going to be installing WordPress and doing all the best practice things ourselves if you've watched one of our tutorials. So don't touch that. It's going to be all free. Go next when you've done that. Add a blog title, add a username and your name and your email address. And that's important because if you ever forget your password um, to WordPress, that will be sent to that email address there. Agree to the terms and conditions and hit install. This will take just a couple of minutes. Perfect. When that's done, it will let you know that WordPress has installed and your username and password will be available. What I suggest is copying and pasting that somewhere so you don't lose it for the time being. Now, when you click on your domain there, if this page is coming up, that means that your domain has been registered and connected properly. But if you can't see that, that means that your domain probably hasn't been activated. So what I would suggest is just contacting HostGator via their live chat and letting them know that you need your domain to be activated and your account to be activated. If you've bought your domain elsewhere, you'll need to connect your domain to your hosting by changing the name servers. That's very easy and I cover that in our eMedia Coach website. But it's very easy. What you need to do is click login and you should see a login screen here. If that doesn't come up, that means your domain is not connected to your web host. So that means your domain, this thing here, is not connected to HostGator or HostGator simply have not activated your account. Enter your username and password from this screen here. And then click login.
And there we are, we have now successfully installed WordPress. And the next step is, we're going to be exporting the website from our local host and importing it to our brand new domain. Right now, it's live and public facing, but it's a basic WordPress installation. I'm going to show you the next two steps side by side, just so you can see the process clearly. Okay, so here we are side by side. Here is our local website. It's a beautiful e-commerce website. And here is our web host domain that we've registered and our default installation of WordPress. So what we need to do next is export the website from the local host and then import the website from the web host. To do this, let's go into the dashboard of each one. And we're going to need to install a new plugin for each version. So if you go to plugins and go to add new, I'm going to do the same thing for the web host version. We are going to search for a plugin called all in one migration. This is the one here by Servmask. Install that one and then click activate. So that's installed and activated on our local instance. Now we're going to do the same thing on our real public facing instance. So all in one migration. We're going to install that plugin and activate it. Perfect. Once you install and activate, you should see all in one migration on the sidebar here. What you need to do is hover over that and click on the export button because we're going to be exporting from here and then importing this entire website over here. Very cool. So let's go there and export. Let's export to a file on our computer. What it will do is export all of the website packages into a export folder file that we can put on our computer and then we'll be importing that file over here. So that might take a few minutes to prepare. Once that's done, click on that button so you can download that file onto your computer somewhere. And save. Once that's all saved, you then move on to the web host website. Go to all-in-one migration and click import. We want to import from we want to import from that file that we just saved to our computer. So find that file on your computer, wherever you save that, double click. Some of you may get this notification here that your file exceeds the maximum upload size. If you do get that, what we need to do is one more step. So I'm just going to open this in a new tab. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a plugin that you're able to use. So let's click on that. And there is an additional file to be able to that you can install in WordPress that will be able to upload up to 512 megabytes. So let's just download that. It's called the all-in-one migration file extension and save that zip file. Once that's saved, just close that, go back into your plugins. We want to add a new plugin and that file we just downloaded, the extension is actually a plugin. So instead of searching over here now, what you do is go up here and click on upload plugin and then click on the browse button, find that file on your computer, it's this one here, and install now, and then activate that. Once that's done, let's try that process again. So all in one migration, import. Import from file, and let's select that import file that we downloaded earlier, and click open. And now you can see that the import process is working and it might take a while to upload that file to your web host depending on the speed of your internet connection. It's a 100 megabyte file. At my internet connection speed and it's quite fast, it will take probably about five minutes. So just be patient, you'll see the progress bar. So I'll give it a few minutes and come back to this when it's done. So the upload is done, it did take a while, 
it's just checking that you do want to overwrite your website, including everything on it. Yes, let's proceed. It's now restoring all of those files. And it's just about done. The final step it asks you to do is to go to your permalinks section and save your permalink structure twice. I'm not too sure why it asks that, but it just does. So let's just do that. Let's click on that link. The login details here, it's important to remember, are now the login details for your local host. So it doesn't matter what you selected for your login details for your new WordPress installation. It has now overridden that and you need to log in using the credentials that you had for your local installation. So let's just save the changes. Let's just save our permalink structure twice. So that's once and once more. Okay, now let's close this and let's check out our website. Absolutely brilliant. Just to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. There we go. We have successfully moved our entire WordPress website from our local server on our computer to our live server on the web host that is now publicly accessible with the public facing domain. And this is perfect for any WordPress website. If you have any questions about that, ask in the comments below. But if this video has helped you, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Subscribe for more awesome videos in the future. Catch you next time.